Okay, this is part three of the derivation of the sampling theorem. And I'm hopeful this will be the last of these videos in the sequence. We're close to being done. If you have not watched parts one and two, this video may not make a lot of sense. I'm afraid that even if you have watched parts one and two, this video may, may not make a lot of sense. But we'll keep going and see how it goes. So in part two, we had developed uh, the following or the expression in blue, this expression, to describe the uh, Fourier transform of the sampled signal x of t. So we had taken x, we would sampled it at uh, intervals of t sub s seconds. And uh, then we discovered that this Fourier transform basically takes copies of the Fourier transform of x, the spectrum of x, and moves them out to be centered at omega s, 2 omega s, 3 omega s, and so on, and negative omega s, negative 2 omega s, and so on, in the opposite direction. So you can see then that um, the way I've drawn this, this is probably an OK thing. It turns out that I can get uh, a copy, my original x of t back from this by running x of t. So if we have our sampled, by running the samples through an ideal low-pass filter. And if I've done things correctly, and we'll talk about what it means to do things correctly in just a minute, I should get x out. So here I have an ideal low-pass filter. It has a magnitude, or the frequency response of an ideal low-pass filter. It has a magnitude of 1. It goes out to some cutoff frequency, which I'll write as omega c. And between minus omega c and omega c, it multiplies everything by 1. So my um, original spectrum of x gets multiplied by 1. Everything outside of this uh, pass band, so for values of omega greater than omega c or less than negative omega c, I have multiplication by 0. So all of these extra versions of uh, x of omega are eliminated. And you can see then that coming out of my ideal low-pass filter, I should indeed have a, uh, a version of x. Now, that applies for the situation that I've drawn here, where the spectrum of x, which we assume goes out to some value here and here, does not overlap with this copy of the spectrum of x. OK. If the spectrum of x here does overlap with this copy of the spectrum of x, then I'm not going to be able to reconstruct my signal x of t. So um, let's draw a second picture that shows what that would look like. Okay, so I take my first copy of x of omega. Did I say x? I think I said x of s earlier. That is not right. This is the Fourier transform, not the Laplace transform of x. And now suppose that omega s, uh, let's give it a value right here. So now my first copy of omega s gets put here. And you can see now that I've got this place where they overlap. My first copy going this way gets put here. This would be negative omega s. And you can see again I've got this place where they overlap. And so on. Now you remember, if you go back to our original expression up here, the spectrum for x of s is the sum of, the spe of these individual spectra of x that are shifted. So where these things overlap, the sum 
So if this represents the sum, might do something like this. And it's not actually important what it does other than to recognize that it is not the same as x of s. If I now take my ideal low pass filter and put it in here, again with an amplitude of 1, you can see that I have a lot of stuff in here, this part of all this stuff, this part of all this stuff, that will not be filtered out by my low-pass filter. And in fact, even if I were to try to do this intelligently and set the cutoff frequency of my low-pass filter here and here, there's still all this stuff up here that has been added in because my copies of the, freq of the spectrum of x of omega have overlapped each other. So when this happens, you have a situation called aliasing. In the time domain, aliasing looks like you don't have enough samples to represent the wiggles in your circuit. In the frequency domain, aliasing looks like the copies of the spectrum of x that are made colliding with one another and messing each other up. So this basically gives us then a criterion that we can use to determine whether or not our uh, sampling rate is sufficient. And to actually explain that criterion, I need to define one last thing. We'll assume that x, or the spectrum of x, goes from 0 out to 2 pi b and that it goes from 0 out to negative 2 pi b. b, in this case, is called the bandwidth of x. And so, again, we're assuming that x of omega is 0 for values of omega larger than 2 pi b and less than negative 2 pi b. If that's the case, then x of omega is called band limited. Okay, and so the sampling theorem applies to a band-limited signal. So again, from our picture, we can see then clearly that in order for this to work, I need omega s to be greater than 2 pi b, and I actually, well, it's write it this way, omega s over 2. So this point halfway between 0 and omega s, I need to have it be greater than this 2 pi b. And I can simplify that to write this as omega s is greater than 4 pi b. Or I can divide through by 2 pi to take this from radial frequency to just frequency. And f sub s is greater than 2b. And that is the uh, sampling theorem. As long as f sub s is greater than 2b, then I can exactly reconstruct x. OK. Just a few final comments, and we'll be done here. This ideal low-pass filter that reconstructs x exactly in the time domain I'll get rid of some of this up here. The impulse response, h of t, of this uh, ideal low-pass filter turns out to be, well, it's the inverse uh, Fourier transform of uh, this guy here, which if you work it out, it's 2 sine of uh, omega s over 2 t over omega. And this is a sinc function. So if I graph this, it looks something like that. OK. When I do the reconstruction, um, I'm going to take well, in fact, let's actually write this out. Uh, 
Uh, hopefully you'll remember a couple of videos ago we uh, noticed or, or we discovered that x, the sampled version of x, x sub s, can be written as the summation k going from minus infinity to infinity of delta t minus k t sub s and there should be an x of, oh man, I've made a mess of it, k t sub s here as well. So if I take this x, the sampled x, and run it through a filter with this impulse response, the reconstructed x, which I'll call x hat, will be um, given by uh, summation from k going from minus infinity to infinity x of k t sub s times h of t or convolved with h of t. No, no, actually no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of my story here. What actually happens here is if I convolve um, this x sub s convolved with h, I can take this convolution inside the sum and I'm going to have an h convolved with a shifted delta function and that just gives us a shifted h. So that's what we need to put down here. So what this says is that to reconstruct my signal I take the samples evaluated at every t sub s seconds, I multiply a uh, sinc function, that's what this guy is, by those sample values and then I just add them all together. So to reconstruct a signal, suppose this is the sample of x that I have here, I multiply that by the sinc function, and suppose I have a smaller, whoops, let's get rid of that guy, that was not where I wanted it. I have a smaller uh, sample here, I multiply this by a sinc function, And uh, here we'll take this sample and redraw it in a different color so you can kind of see what's going on. And I do this for every sample. It turns out that this exactly reconstructs x of t. So the sinc function is the perfect interpolating function, which is why it's such an important function. Now the question that you might ask is, well what if I don't have an ideal low pass filter because it turns out that it's impossible to build an, low pass, an ideal low pass filter in the real world. In that case, this h of t will be something other than a sinc function. But what I'll do is still take copies of h of t, shift them over by k t sub s and multiply them by the magnitude of x sampled at that point. So. This concludes the video. Uh, we're almost out of time. Hopefully uh, now the sampling theorem makes a little better sense to you. The important concepts again is that you have to sample at least twice the bandwidth of the signal and the reconstruction is obtained by taking sa your samples of the signal and multiplying them by shifted versions of a sinc function if you're doing ideal reconstruction or whatever the impulse response of your filter is if you're not doing ideal reconstruction.